Hi and welcome to the Low Level Devil channel. In this Linux systems programming series I'm going to be going into detail on some of the shared functions that I create for other video series. In this video I'm going to show you how to execute a child process, use the pipe syscall to read its std out and std error, and write those to the parent processes std out, as well as an optional log file. So let's get started. So first I'm going to paste some of the header files that I need to include, several of the standard ones, and then I'm going to cr create a function called exec command. It's going to create a char pointer, exe, a char pointer, a log file, and then variable arguments. So let me write some documentation for this function to start out. So exec command. So the first thing it's taking in is exe, which is an executable binary file. It also could be a uh, shell script if it has the correct shaping at the top. Then the second optional field is the log file. So you can put the file name for a log file to log the std out and std error of that child process. Or you can put null and then it will just not write that to a file. And then the variable arguments are char pointer arguments to pass to that executable file. So I'll just write a little more documentation here so it's clear. Executes, let's see, executes a binary file with arguments and pipes its std error and std out to std out of the parent and an optional log file. Let's see, is that enough? Or let's see, also say to simplify the implementation. So we're going to limit it to max arguments of 20. So you can only pass 20 arguments in. I'm going to create a static const int max args equals 20. And that's just because of the uh, array that I'm creating. I want to create it simple and not have to uh, create it on the fly. I'm just going to use a, a, very, uh, a size 20 of the arguments. So to start out with, we need to create this simple array, which is the read and write file descriptors for the pipe call. So 0 is the read and 1 is the write, I believe. So now we're going to make a call to the pipe syscall, pass that in. So if it returns a non-zero value, we'll just say failed to pipe and return negative 1. Okay, so next we want to create a PID, a process ID, from the fork syscall. So that's going to split this application, create a duplicate, a duplicate of the uh, process. If that returns negative 1, then process failed for some reason. Um, yeah, actually executable not existing wouldn't be correct. It could be like out of uh, out of system handles or something like that. Okay, so next if the PID is zero, that means we are in the child process. So the next thing I want to do is say if PID equals zero, this is where we want to handle the new child process. So I'm using this char pointer array of max args, initializing it all to zero. Then we need to call the dupe2 system call. So this will duplicate a file descriptor. And I want to use the pipe FDS1. I'm going to dupe that as std out file no and std error file no. So the std out and std error are going to be duplicates of this pipe, uh, the write file descriptor. Okay, so now I can close the pipe 
file descriptor because I've already duplicated it. Alright, so now we need to use the VA list because we're using a variable argument list. And then we say VA start on that VA list and start at the log file variable. So this right here, it's going to start processing arguments after that. Okay, so now char p equals zero. The p is going to be what we're uh, looping through and grabbing the uh, arguments. So we'll say va arg, va list, char pointer is the type, and then i plus plus. And we're starting at i is one because that's where our first actual argument goes in. The arg zero is actually the name of the executable. Okay, so now inside of here, we're going to say if i is greater than or equal to the max args, then we just want to say, we'll print to std error that the max args for exec command hit. And no, we don't want to return. Let's just break. We'll just break out of the loop. So we only process the first 20. So then we set args i to the value p, which was returned by this va args. Okay, so moving on, we need to call va end to signify we're done processing the variable arguments. And let's call exec vp. So this is the exec um, syscall it also uses the path environment variable takes in the file you want to execute and the arguments as argv okay so now this should never return unless there is an error so should never return if it does actually return that means that there was actually a problem executing it. Could be permissions, could be file doesn't exist. We'll just use p error so it'll print out the message for that. Okay, and we'll call exit minus one. Okay, so this is all the section where the child process is handled. I'll say in the child process. And then at that exit, it's done. So it'll never get to this part down here. So this is the parent process. So inside the parent process, let's see. We'll, call, we'll create a read buffer first. I'll just say 1K. And we want to actually read the data from that pipe. So we'll Start, we'll create a log fd as zero, so that's the file descriptor for the log file. The first thing we're going to do is actually close the write pipe, because the write pipe in the parent is not needed. We're not writing data to the pipe for the child to read. And let's see, back up here. Yeah, so log file, that's the file name. If we want to pass in a log file. So if so, we're going to say log fd equals open log file, and we'll add permissions for this will be ordwr. So we're going to read write, open it for read write, and create it. Then the permissions on the file that we create are going to be irusr, irwriteusr. Let's see, s. Remember what the group one is. It's S G. Oh, R. Yeah, R G R P. So read group. And S. Actually, this one's messed up. That should be R. So we're having the user read and write. The group read and write. And we can also say. Let's see. Other can read. Okay, now that that's done, we're going to just in a while loop, we're going to call the read syscall. 
read from the read part of the pipe. We're going to read into the read buffer size of read buffer. And while we're doing that, we're going to write to, we want to write to STD out. So we can actually pa pass the uh, number for STD out. So STD out file no, which is one. And we're going to write the read buffer plus the uh, number of bytes to read. And if the log file is there, we're going to write to that as well. Same thing. We could do extra error checking there as well. I'm not being that strict. So now if this is when we're finished, um, log FD, we're going to close the log file descriptor. And we're going to close that read pipe. Since we are finished reading with it. And then finally, we're going to check the status of that returned. And we are going to call wait PID. So this is going to wait on a process ID. Grab the status from it and zero as the parameter. Actually, let's check the error status of this as well. If that equals negative one, we'll return exit failure which is just one. Okay, so now down here, then we're going to run, return w exit status and pass in that status variable. So that will give us the return status of the application we're executing. So now let's go on and create some test function for this. So in our int main, we're going to make a call to exec command. We'll run ls. And we'll log it to ls.log. And we'll use dash ls. So that should run ls dash ls in our current directory. Then we also need to pass in zero at the end. We need to zero terminate this list in order for this function to work because up here let's see yeah here we're, we're reading that VA arg we finish once we hit P is 0 so if you don't specifically specify 0 it's kind of undefined behavior of this function so let's print out the return value of that and maybe we sleep for a couple seconds. Let's do the same thing, but this time I'm going to pass in something that will cause it to error out. So we'll say we're going to run ls-ls -ls on slash bad file dot text, which doesn't exist. So that should show us an error code. And let's see, we need to also remove this int. Now we're also going to run, let's see, tz select, just to show you what happens when I don't pass a log file and no parameters. tz select also takes input from the user. You'll see that it still works as expected. All right, I think that's everything. So let's run gcc exit command. Let's see, what do we do wrong here? I think it doesn't like me using a static const. It doesn't consider it to be constant, so I'm going to have to change that to define. So define 20. Mm, something's still wrong with it. Let's see. Oh, we got a semicolon up there. Okay, should be good now. Let's try it again. Alright, so now if we run a dot out, 
actually let's run ls lstr so yeah there's an, that's the files that we see and when we run ls ls you can see it shows those same files and then it ran tz select i can enter some data here 49 11 and 1 and it says tz select return 0 so let me run that again we see a ls.log actually let me make this ls2.log clear rebuild it and just run it again so 0 returned this one returned 2 and then this one again just gonna put some data in there return 0 so now we can see ls.log and ls2.log we look at ls.log that's exactly the output of ls and ls2.log it's the error text so that should be it for this video this is should give you an idea on how you can run an, an external command uh, pipe data to it read read data from the pipe um, execute it as a separate process so uh, hopefully you learned something from this video. Again, I'm going to be using this in the um, Linux distribution from scratch series as well. So I'll refer to this video inside of there. And if, if you did like this video and you learned something from it, please share it, like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching.